Now, in order to turn a 2D image into a 3D scene, you actually need to separate the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Now, we're going to do that in Photoshop, but it's just going to be a few steps because the complexity of an image goes with your Photoshop skills. What's up, guys? How you doing? It's your boy, Cat6 Creativity, once again. I feel good seeing you. I feel good. Let's do this. So we have our image right here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the original image. Rename this layer to foreground. Okay. Click OK. I'm going to blind this image right here so we won't be using it. We're going to take our foreground here. As you can see on my image, I want this front grass right here, which goes up to this dude right here to be my foreground. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate uh, this foreground. First, I'm going to zoom in to this guy. Then I'm going to take the pen tool and start rotoscoping. I'm going to zoom out here, pressing control zero and I'm going to just do a rough mask here on this grass because we are going to be using an eraser to to soften the edges of this grass right here uh, right click on our selection here make selection and we're going to put the further radius to 2 and press ok now this is our foreground so what we're going to do because we don't want to delete this guy we want to delete everything outside go to selection inverse and delete press ctrl d to deselect take the eraser tool right here increase the feather the size and uh, the hardness is going to be to zero because that's what we want to do we just want to feather this soften the edges here just about there and on this side too reduce the size as we get close to our subject because we don't want to like feather him out the whole point of this is just to make it look more realistic now as you can see our composition here is 1920 by 1080 but our image is not so what we're going to do is uh, select the clone stamp and we are going to increase here uh, this foreground by selecting some place like here and you know yes painting over now that's ready let's create the middle ground then after that we'll create the background then after that the separate helicopters elements that we're going to be placing into our 3d scene we're going to be using the same techniques you're going to be using the clone tool you're going to be using the pen tool because this is the image that doesn't have too many details and you can actually play around and manipulate and delete some stuff you know you, you know you don't you don't have to actually create the 3d scene according to how the actual image is what you have to do is play around with it you know remove some stuff put in some stuff just the way it works for you and eventually separate clean layers of the background the foreground and the middle ground name it middle ground turn off the original and what I'm going to do is delete this guy right here, delete this guy in front of him. I'm going to leave this guy right here. I'm going to delete this guy right here. And you know, yeah. So let's do it. I'm going to take my pen tool right here. And I'm going to create a rough mask here around this area because this is where I want my middle ground to be to this guy then I'll zoom in here to get a look good look at this guy then I'm going to crop Close this mask. 
right click make selection and I'll make this three. press ok select inverse and that is so I'll also go into details with this one zoom in right here take the pen tool some of this and then what I'm going to do is take the eraser tool again increase the size make sure the feather like the hardness is completely zero I'm going to feather the grass here once again make sure the middle ground is selected deselect everything and um, yes smoothen out the edges here because we do not want to have like really really rough edges on the grass because again grass is not rock okay the final layer we're going to be working with is the background and after that we'll just be cutting out the little helicopters by using the pen tool and then once we finish having all the layers we're going to transfer the layers to after effects we're going to duplicate this rename it to background deactivate this layer select the background layer and what we're going to do this is just simple we're going to be uh, uh, cloning we're going to use the clone tool and we're going to do a cleaner So there now we have our background right here we have our foreground we have our middle ground the final thing i'm going to do is to separate uh these small helicopters right here helicopter, helicopter. into different separate layers okay so what i will do is i will crop this helicopter right here and crop uh this helicopter right here and, and this and this helicopter right here and just create a dynamic look to the actual elements that are in so we just don't have the foreground the background and stuff we, we can have like separate layers in there So now that we got all our layers ready separated we got our background we got our middle ground we got our foreground we got our helicopters ready here go ahead and save this file into a psd and as you can see i've already saved mine uh right here for this scene so go ahead and save and close this and let's open up after effects now go ahead and double click on the project panel right here and look for our psd file you can see it's right here 3d scene import layer options editable layer styles and import kind make sure you select composition retain layer sizes so we can have our 1920 by 1080 p separated photoshop layers you can see like the layers we have them in this folder right here but also when we double click on our composition right here through this scene we have all our layers here into after effect perfectly separated for us to edit now go ahead and right click right here and create new camera now i've already made an in-depth 
tutorial on how to use a camera a 3d camera tool in after effects you can go check it out on the card that's popping up right now and you'll understand in depth how to use this 3d camera right now we're going to create on our presets 50 mils and enable depth of uh, depth of field and click ok i'm going to select two views and i will leave the second view right here into uh the top view as you can see right here it's the top view you can actually change it with the options down here so i'm changing it to top view so i can separate all these layers right here into different positions on our 3d space in order to get control of our layers you need to uh, actually make all of these layers 3d so what i'm gonna do is click on this box right here and click and hold and drag down to select make them all 3d and you can see now if we select uh, any layer we get these options to actually move around on the z x and y axis so right now i'm going to start separating my layers right here into different positions on our 3d space starting with our foreground i'm going to move it closer move it closer like on the beginning of our video on our beginning of our composition right here i'm going to uh, press s on my keyboard and scale it down to make sure that i fit on i fit it on my composition and then i'm going to click on the y axis and pull it up like right here you can see now our foreground is right here next thing i'm going to select my middle ground and i'll pretty much leave my middle ground right here in the middle next thing i'm going to select my background and i'm going to move my background further away from the composition right on the back like right here and click s on our keyboard right again and scale it up to make sure it fits with our composition right here move up on our y-axis yes now we got our foreground background and middle ground in position let's move the helicopters into different uh, places as you can see if i select my helicopter right here helicopter helicopter you can see they are all aligned on the middle and the middle is where our middle ground is so we're going to start separating them one by one starting with these ones right here move click on the x-axis in our top view move it by looking at our active camera right here or you can actually just select on our active camera right here right here okay i'm going to leave it right right there in the middle next thing i'm going to select is uh, this helicopter right here i'll move it a bit closer to the composition and i'll click on the y axis and move it down and yeah like right here i'll actually scale this a little bit down like 80. yes like right here Make sure it's close to the foreground, but not too close. I'm going to move it up a little bit, like right here. That's nice. Next thing I'm going to select this helicopter right here. I'm going to move it a little bit farther away from our. A little bit farther away. Okay. Make sure you move the x axis to make sure that it fits it doesn't see like it has been cropped and we're going to finish up with this one right here this because it's far away i'm going to move it far close to the background image right here and now what i'm going to do is scale it up a little bit like 120 select the helicopter move it up a little bit now that we have everything positioned in different uh, places on our 3d space we are going to select our camera and what we are going to do now is work on the camera settings now the camera options right here um, 
before we tap in on the camera options just remember to put this back to v1 and you can see like our background is a little bit uh, scaled down so make sure we fix that by selecting the background layer click s on our keyboard and scale it up just a little bit like that and move it on our like uh, right there okay now that is done what we're going to do right now is select uh, this As you can see select our camera come to our camera options increase our aperture right here the blur level is going to be uh, 400 you don't have to copy everything that I'm doing right here. Okay, that's too much. Going to reduce. You don't have to like copy everything I'm doing right here. Like those tutorials where they just show you like click this number. You actually need to play around with this and experiment and see what works for you. So, 100 on the blur level is actually the natural blur level so you can leave it to 100 and that's fine okay we can also see our foreground like right here is a little bit small so make sure you select that click us on our keyboard and um, scale it up as you can see we have our depth of field activated and we have our blur level already set what we are going to do is now set the focus distance so i'm going to animate this focus distance as i move my 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 cursor so i'll click on the stopwatch right here and the focus distance to put a keyframe then i'll make sure as i am beginning my animation my dude here on the foreground is active and everything on the background is blurry as you can see right now uh, my dude is actually sharp and everything on the background right there is blurry i'm going to move on the end of my timeline and i'm going to change again the focus distance increase the focus distance and change it to the background let to set it like like right here some place close to this guy right here in the middle ground here and the background okay so now that's ready click f9 to make our keyframes easy ease and now uh come on the beginning of our timeline right here on our transition properties come to position activate the stopwatch make sure you're in the beginning of the time frame you have our keyframe now move to the end of our timeline select the dolly tool click hold and drag okay let's change the properties here of our camera options as you remember we did set here a keyframe for our focus distance we just make sure that that is uh, sharp that we have a little bit of details here in the background so i'll sharpen the background like right there you can see now we have a blurry on this helicopter right here and these guys but we can see these guys up here so come back on our tra transform properties and position Select the keyframe, press F9, select the keyframe, press F9. And now let's play this and see how it works out. And this works the same even if you were, even you were to use the orbit tool, like right now, I'm going to go in the end of my timeline uh, and i'll leave this like right here 
we'll come on our beginning of our timeline and then I'll I'll try to to change the orbit here. To make sure like using in the using these tools they are actually going to change. They are going to affect uh, your perspective and your layer sizes. So just make sure after using any of these tools, you will go back and uh, fix everything. Like right now, you can see we have this black screen right here in the beginning, but also in the end. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale up my background. I'm going to put a keyframe here, put it on the end of my timeline, and I'll zoom in right here. And this will actually create some kind of a pretty cool effect. Select both of these keyframes. Press F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease. Now let's see how this works out. As you can see now, with that, the background gets to be revealed beyond this grass. And you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can add explosions in there. You can add dust particles. You can actually animate these separate layers individually. It's just the way you want it to be. You can put turbulence in the grass here and animate this grass. You know, you can actually go crazy with this. So go out there and create something awesome with this.